Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is Child Care Rockstar Radio, episode 142, featuring Bruce Spur. Hey folks, welcome back. I'm so thrilled to have you here. My name is Chris Murray, and I am the host and founder of the Child Care Rockstar Radio podcast. And welcome to 2023. This is actually our second episode in the new year. I hope that you enjoyed our first episode of 2023, which is a groundbreaking episode with Miss Lisa Nichols. And if you didn't get a chance to listen to that one yet, listen to this one first, and then definitely go back and check that out. That is episode 141. My guest today is Bruce Spur. Bruce is my partner over at Grow Your Center, and we build beautiful websites and do incredible digital marketing and recruitment staffing for uh, the childcare industry. And we are, I think, the leading agency that focuses exclusively on ECE. I think we're the largest at this point. Very, very proud of what we've built. And Bruce, who's wicked smart, has not been on the podcast, much to my chagrin and dismay, since May of 2020 in the height of the pandemic. So I'm really excited to bring him back to you guys, especially those of you that aren't familiar with him. It's been nearly three years, and we dive into a well-loved topic inside of the Academy, which is all about boss mode. So the title of today's episode is The Real Truth About Boss Mode and shining a light on what it means, how do we define it, why should you care, how can this episode change your life. Actually, there's a ton of nuggets and writer downers in here. We talk about boss mode versus grind mode. (laughs) And so, so, so many of our clients uh, on both sides of the house, on the Child Care Success Academy and as well as Grow Your Center, uh, we have helped you with probably the thing we're known for the most has helped you get out of grind mode, get out of working on just fighting fires all day in your business and elevate up to working on your business. And we're going to dive in on that today and really peel back the layers on it. And what does boss mode mean? Because we talk today a little bit about things with regard to boss mode that we haven't touched in the past. Things that are really important about it, most importantly, mindset habits and and behaviors and beliefs related to how to get to boss mode, how to stay there, how to sustain your uh, level of play as a business owner, leader, entrepreneur in the ECE space with this notion of boss mode. So uh, I know you're going to get a ton out of this episode. I have a really important announcement to make, everybody. So I wanted to start out this year creating a community, elevating our child care rockstar community to an even higher level and getting more voices on the podcast. And we will be doing that. We are going to launch some short lunch, lunch and learn or lunch hour episodes. It'll be quick 15 or 20 minute hits that you will hear from other members of the CCS team, including our beloved coaches, of course. And even perhaps more importantly than that, we have a community element. Now we've added in a way for you to contact us and actually let us hear your voice and hear your question. So we have created a ask a question, leave us a voicemail feature for the podcast. And you don't have to do any, you don't have to opt into it. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is click a button and leave us your question or your feedback on the show. And you can do that at our main website, which hosts all of our episodes. So if you want a place that's kind of your go-to place that you can bookmark and watch back all the episodes or listen back. You have that choice with all 142 episodes at childcaresuccess.com forward slash podcast. Childcaresuccess.com forward slash podcast. And when you go there, 
not only will you have access to all the episodes, but you will have a little button that you will see on the right-hand side of your screen. And it is a vertical button that says, leave a question and, uh, or get, send us a voicemail. It says, send us send, send a voicemail. And you just click on that and you can put your name and email is optional. So again, it's absolutely easy and we're not collecting any email addresses. So just what I really wanna do with this is I wanna hear your voice. So I will strongly encourage and invite you to go there and share with us, either share an insight, ask a question, give us feedback, make a comment on the show. We will have at least one question played back. uh, So you'll actually get to hear your voice. And what I'd like you to do is tell us your name, tell us the name of your school or center, your business name, maybe tell us where you're calling from. And then give us your question or your comment, because I want a more community aspect to this show, and I cannot wait to hear from you. I will be answering your questions live. If we get a lot of questions, I'll do more than one per show, and we might even do a thing where my assistant, Robin, will feed me the questions, and I won't look in advance, and she'll kind of try to quiz me and get me off my game and stump me. It'll be uh, stump Chris. So if we play your question, you will win a nice prize. Right now I'm thinking something like a $50 Amazon gift card. We also have been known to send three packs of wine to people. We've also been known to send uh, ice cream or steaks and sides from Omaha Steaks or or many other various things. So we might have some fun toys. We might have some electronic gifts. So similar to how we do on our challenges, if your question is chosen, you will be the question of the week. and will give you a nice prize for your time. Um, Plus you get to hear your voice and get a little bit of promotion out of it on the podcast. So if you'd rather type some feedback, you can type it instead of leave a message as well. But we were trying to get this thing to be more interactive. And I was actually inspired by one of my favorite podcasts, which is the We Can Do Hard Things podcast with Glennon Doyle, her wife, Abby, and her sister. And we love, I love that podcast. And they refer to their community of listeners as their pod squad. So I couldn't quite go there, guys, because I just, I'm like half thinking it's really cute. And half of me thinks it's kind of cheesy to call you guys the pod squad. So maybe we can think of a different name. If you have a name for our tribe that you can lend to the podcast, maybe we'll have a naming contest. So if you think of one, please send it along and we would love to have a cute name for our audience. And if it's the pod squad, then I guess that's what it is, but maybe we can think of something slightly different. So that is the big announcement for 2023. We are changing it up. We're going to do more short episodes, more voices on the podcast and especially your voice. So go to childcaresuccess.com forward slash podcast and leave us a question or some feedback. And we would love to feature you and send you a prize. All right. With that, let's dive in. We're going to learn about boss mode today. If you are listening in the car, that's cool. But I love when you could listen with a pen and paper in hand and jot down some action items out of each podcast. That's a best practice. You'll get a ton out of it. And if you just take action on what you hear on this podcast, you can grow your business by 2X, 3X, 10X. There's no no stopping you. And certainly if you're a startup and opening your first center, this is a great uh, resource for you to learn. Oh my gosh, what we've covered on this podcast is insane in terms of business startup advice, what to do and what not to do. So please just listen with a pen in hand when you can and and enjoy it. Uh, You can watch all the episodes on YouTube and you can also watch them uh, embedded at childcaresuccess.com forward slash podcast. Okay, look forward to hearing from you and let's dive in right now to episode 142 with my friend, Mr. Bruce Spur. Let's go. Well, today is a special day because my friend 
and business partner, Mr. Bruce Spur, is back with me here at the podcast. It's been two and a half years since Bruce was here on the show, which I cannot believe where that went. But Bruce, you were here with us in May of 2020, right in the height of COVID. So welcome back to Child Care Rockstar Radio. How are you? Uh, thanks, Chris. It's good to be back. To be honest, uh, glad that we could collectively erase those last two years. So, <laughs> I know. Right? It's, <laughs> Who thinks about those? Nobody. It's like a magic eraser came in and like erased it out of our brain, kind of. Like the little remnants of trauma are back, are in there still, but we're trying to move forward. So it's good. Right. Good. Yeah. Well, well, well I'm very grateful back. to be back. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. You. Where are you? I'm actually in Ottawa right now and uh, at my home office because my main office is all packed up and I'm getting ready to move on January 3rd. So Awesome. Well, congrats. So you're moving to the States? I'm moving to the U.S. of A. <laughs> they finally got me. They finally let me in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All this time, you've been like, nope, Bruce is not allowed in the States. Nope, <laughs> nope. But I'm so glad that well, you'll be closer. It's good. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. Good, good. Well, um, for those of you not familiar with Bruce, uh, he is the co-founder of Grow Your Center with me. And we have been on this journey together as business partners since uh, the summer of 2018. And prior to that, Bruce was helping me as kind of my social media ads manager. Um, And so, yeah, we've been working together really for the last five years-ish, five plus. And so we're going to talk today about something that we have talked about uh, at quarterly meetings and on the Academy, uh, the Child Care Success Summit stage, which is the concept of boss mode. And uh, we both have our our shirts, our logoed shirts on today representing (laughs) both brands. And I have my blazer to represent boss mode. And um, nice. And it's good. And so uh, tell us a little, before we dive into boss mode, tell us a little bit more about what you do for the world of early learning and childcare. Well, Grow Your Center, or GYC for short, is uh, a marketing and recruitment agency. And we're, we're 100% dedicated to the childcare industry. On the marketing side, our goal is to get uh, enrollments, um, get enrollments up. And on the recruitment side, get staff. So pretty simple and straightforward. Those, uh, those are the two result-focused mandates that we've got. And uh, we have, uh, I don't know, over 300 clients now um, that we serve um, in various regard. Um, across most of it, across the United States, a few in Canada, UK, and uh, Japan, and a couple of kind of uh, scattered throughout the world here and there, but uh, predominantly in the US and, mm-hmm. and pretty much covering the entire country. <laughs> so... You have developed so many new services at Grow Your Center. We have together, but you've done, you know, you do all the heavy lifting over there. And also, in addition to the enrollments and the recruitment is diving into the, I'll call it the marketing operations of the business, uh, i.e. people's CRMs. So we recently did a webinar talking about how GYC also can help Mm -hmm. set up and help you leverage and optimize the power of your CRM software because many, many, many operators and clients of ours that we have in common, they set it up and they forget it and then they never leverage it and they never optimize it. And it just becomes dusty and old and there's so much more power that they could bring to it. So I wanted to mention that too, because that's one of the newer services and that's something that's really, really important that nobody else that I know of is bringing to the world of early learning is to really help them get the most juice out of their CRM. Yeah, I mean, uh, actually it's a nice dovetail into the concept of, uh, of what Boss Mode is all about. When we started uh, helping people, we noticed that, I mean, we started looking at people's enrollments and people would come to us and say, we don't have enough leads in the system. When we dug into their CRM, we realized that, you know, the leads coming in were one thing, but the conversion of that lead into an actual tour and then a registration was a second part of it. And that's, and that automation was lacking. Um, it was, it had a lot of potential because, I mean, you pay a lot to get those leads in. And if you can basically en- enroll, you know, just boost up your conversion from, from lead to tour to registration just by 5%, you get a magnificent 
uh, ROI out of that. And, uh, and then the second part of it was that people were only using their CRM for about this much and it's capable of doing that much. Right. Um, separating my, for those only listening from, imagine my hands together about six inches apart to, you know, three, four feet apart. So there was probably, yeah. you know, 50 to 75% of the capacity of a CRM that people weren't leveraging. And that's, you know, that's automation, building up business systems on onboarding and helping out with um, getting reviews and referrals. And, and just like, I mean, I guess what GYC does in the end, it helps with uh, kind of turning marketing and even recruiting into an automated business system. So you're kind of fully delegating it to us. And then we're helping um, kind of automate those, those processes. And, and the, I mean, the ROI on saving the time, energy, and taking all that money off the table um, supporting cash flow for ones who are fully enrolled and just pulling that money in sooner. It's, it's just huge. I mean, it's, it's the, it, it's tremendous. I mean, it goes from somebody, you know, uh, struggling in the business or making ends meet and, and doing okay to doing phenomenally well, expanding, yeah. um, into multiple locations and, and growing. And even if they, if they have multiple locations already, just building their empire. So it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely love it. Um, so let's talk about boss mode because you mentioned the word empire. That's the highest level of academy coaching clients. And and a lot of our empire builders, empire members are fully in or embracing <clears throat> stepping into boss mode. So how do you define boss mode? Well, I've got two definitions for you. I've got the kind of a simple adage one that everybody kind of will understand. And that's the idea of working uh, on your business versus in it. And when you look at that at kind of a very high level, it, it's, you know, it makes sense. You're working on systems and processes and you're trying to expand and you're working on the things rather than the firefighting that has to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, when I, you know, you, you look at that and you say, okay, well, some of the key questions, when, when we looked at our client base, I saw some clients just flourishing and just crushing it and others would struggle. And then those in between, and I love looking at metadata sets and seeing, you know, since we speak to these folks um, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, we look at their data, we look at how the business is doing. I see them at the academy meetings and have great conversations with folks. Yeah, you start understanding the mindset and then the actions and the approach that they take and what differentiates somebody from boss mode uh, versus somebody who's kind of struggling and playing in, you know, in the grind mode, I'll call yeah. it. So those are the two, you know, you're grinding out your business or you're in kind of boss mode. And then of course, there are just things that you do that have a play in both. But um, what it ended up looking like, if I had to put a definition, is you're spending 80% of your time working on the business and 20% of your time firefighting. There's always going to be stuff that comes up that you as the owner has to solve and resolve and focus on and bring your genius and your capability to, to the table. Um, but, but if you can look at your week and it's a 40 hour week, if you're spending 30 of those hours working on the business and 10 working firefighting and working in the business, you're, you're in boss mode. Um, and if yeah. you're leaning, if you're moving every week towards that or every month towards that, um, then you're moving towards boss mode rather than away from it. So that's it. It's about as simple yeah. as I can get on it. <laughs> I love that. It's funny, Bruce. I'm going to bring in an analogy that is related to, uh-oh. <laughs> so I have a puppy that's running around here right now, and you guys might hear some background noises. And many of you have seen the pictures of Ruby on my on Facebook and such. And when I got Ruby, I dove into, like all good entrepreneurs or business owners do, or people that want to access best, best practice, best in class. I went in and I bought a puppy training class with probably 30 or 40 videos, little snippets of how to be, have your puppy become a dream dog. And I have only probably watched like when I first bought it, I watched all the, the videos I could consume in the first couple of days. Like I was obsessed. And now that she's been home for three and a half weeks, my enthusiasm and my time spent on learning and training has dwindled to like a little tiny thimbleful. And last night I was like thinking about this in terms of business, because I was laughing to myself that people buy our courses and our services to help improve their childcare businesses. But so many of them don't actually have the commitment and the discipline to dive in and do what you're talking about. So setting time on your calendar to spend five or 10 hours a week 
into the automation and systemization, delegation and operations of your business to turn it into boss mode requires discipline, just like me actually diving into puppy training and taking it through to the completion, yeah. which right now she's doing up a box. And so, you know, you can see my epic fail on puppy training at the moment, but <laughs> I can, I can easily dive back in. And so I guess a lesson from that is, you know, we teach people what to do. We give them the fish, we teach them how to fish, and then you're giving them the fish. And so we're, we're doing those things, but if you're not committed and disciplined to improving your business, your life, your experience at home with your puppy, you can apply it to anything in your life, your parenting, your marriage. And so it takes that commitment. Um, but you guys will all have so much more money, so much more bliss, so much more time, freedom, and it's such a more ease if you do, yeah. do do the work on the front end. And so, um, you know, I, I just wanted to mention that because you can, it's a good lesson to take away, especially at this, this time of the year, you guys are going to be seeing this going live in mid January, 2023. And so as we dive into carving out this next year, uh, and what does 2023 mean to you and to me and, and to our industry is we, we have to recommit to best practice, to excellence and to literally execution and, you know, and so talk a little bit about that. Cause for folks that you work with like this, they're not in wave. Um, and so they're, they're in and out, in and out, in and out. What, what do you do when you're working with folks like that, that you you're like going, Hey, and you're trying to shine a light on the fact that they're not fully committed to boss mode, even though they might say that they are, but their actions aren't actually showing that they are. Uh, well, you just hit the nail on the head of where we have our challenges. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. I dove right in today. Let's not waste any time. Come on, let's yeah, start seriously. it. <laughs> um, okay. So let me kind of walk you through some of the characteristics that we discovered that okay. um, it, it's probably um, the way that people, I think boss is kind of comprised of two, two pieces, the, their mindset going into something and their approach they take to solve a problem. And the mindset that, I mean, there's two, there's curiosity and there's fear. And those are the two main mindsets we, we encounter all the time. And the faster you can get from fear to curiosity, the faster it is that, that you know, people succeed and flourish in their life. Mm. And curiosity is, is putting on that, you know, that an investigator's hat on, that Sherlock Holmes kind of hat, that uh, Inspector Clouseau or whatever, you know, Pink yeah. Panther type, you know. Uh -huh. and, and it's that curiosity of, of uh, going, well, what is it here? Uh, being, uh, being open um, to, to figuring out what's happening. And uh, I would say close to probably 60, 70% of the time um, that, yeah. Our, our clients who, who are who, who operate in boss mode a large part of the time, um, they don't point fingers. They they point they they come to us with a problem and say, "This is the problem. What can you guys do? Or what do you think? What do you think is going on?" Um, rather than saying, "Hey, you're the problem. Fix this." Or um, you know, and and the difference is is that a lot of the time, some of the time it's a combination, like they're doing something and we're doing something. Um, and then we both have to fix uh, a behavior and action um, Do take an action that we're missing somewhere. We're not on the same page um, on something. And, you know, and the folks who struggle, they're the ones who basically point the finger at their staff, point the finger at their suppliers, point the finger at, you know, their partner, their spouse, their kids, that everything, but, but this them. person here. Yep. But them, you know, they're, they're not pointing the finger back at themselves going, well, what is the common denominator between all these issues? You know, it's not everyone else in the world. I mean, yes, they, they're pointing to facts like that person did this. That person's not stepping up, that, you know, but but the root cause of all that tends to come from the leader and from the yes. owner themselves. And um, it's very interesting, actually, because. Um, it, you, you can tell that mindset in, in the academy going from growth to freedom to, to um, empire. And yeah. there's some folks in growth who should be in empire, but stay in growth because their mindset is very growth oriented. They haven't, they haven't solved the mindset issue, even though they've got, you know, three, four locations. Like they, you know, they're, they're qualified, they're qualified to be in the higher level. Um, not that yeah. number of locations is the only criteria, right. um, but you know, it, it's that mindset uh, of where they're pointing the finger, where and how they're kind of approaching the problem. Yeah. So 
you know, that that's kind of step one. Um, the, uh, the second part of it is, um, is, is the approach they take. So when you're curious, you ask questions. And with those questions, you know, you, you dig into um, what's happening, what the challenge is. Mm-hmm. And what I find with the Boston Mall clients is they come at us with, with just lots of questions. And they add question, 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 question. Um, and then, you know, we don't, like in our experiences as a marketing or recruiting agency, we don't have all the answers. We need their perspective and their knowledge base, specifically in their community. Like what's happening in your community? We can guess at, and we can figure things out based on some Google searching, demographic research, things like that, but they're living the experience. So they bring the experience to the table that we bring the marketing experience of expertise. And when there's curiosity on both sides, man, that thing, oh, I, just, I got for goosebumps. You know, yeah. when the magic happens and the magic happens in that partnership of coming together and being on the same side of the table and looking at the problem together rather than being on the opposite side of the table and smashing heads and saying, it's you, it's you, it's you, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and our, you know, we're guilty of that too. We've done our fair share of, of finger pointing and blaming. You know? <laughs> and we've all yeah, made our fair well, share of mistakes too. They're obvious, you know? I mean, uh, it's human nature. Every human yeah. and every leader will find themselves at times of frustration into coming into a place of blame and into a place of fear-based behavior as a leader, calling people out on the carpet, all of that kind of behavior, which really decays your culture and causes you to have so many more issues than if you would have just led from love and confidence in the first place. But um, what you said about asking the right question, like what I did, Bruce, when I came to the industry was bring clarity in simple numbers and helping people have easy math to look at the data and figure out what is the, I'm like, you might not actually be asking the right question. Look at the data and make sure. And the data is actually telling us that this is the root cause of the problem. This is the question to be asking, not that question. So, and we keep talking about this, you and I offline, when we're like, uh, the clients are still struggling with making sure that they're looking at the right data and having data just driven decision making and having clarity because a lot of times they're still trying to fix the wrong problem yeah. which then ends up frustrating you and me because we want them to fix the right problem but regardless <laughs> right <laughs> and i'm sure it's frustrating to them too so let's talk about behaviors Absolutely. yeah behaviors and beliefs but a lot is is in the the secret sauce is in your daily monthly habits your quarterly habits of what you do as a entrepreneur business owner, what are the key beliefs and behaviors that set boss mode leaders apart from the rest? We talked about it a little bit, but let's dive into that a little bit, like specific behaviors that you see people yeah, doing absolutely. that are cr- crushing it. I mean, here's a, here's a very, uh, let me get really in the weeds tactical yeah. and then we'll, 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 uh, we'll take it up from there. Um, I'll give you a, a great example is, um, of asking the right question and then looking and digging in to be able to do an apples to apples comparison about things. So at, at Grow Your Center, we have a fantastic, we started Grow Your Center actually with our social media program, uh, with a strategy we call Goodwill Hunting. And, um, so social media is a lot more difficult than it was a few years ago. So you have to kind of come at it a certain approach. So when folks come to us and ask us, like, why is your social media program 10 times more expensive than others or three times or four times? I'm like, listen, this is the minimum charge you need <laughs> amount of effort to get to a result. So you have to ask, start asking the right question. So the first question, which I love, is why is, you know, asking the question, like straight out bluntly going why is this one more than this one that's an approach of curiosity now we have others who basically go and they get their little detail you know they go to a bunch of different vendors and then they choose one based on price and they're like then six months later to come back and they didn't get a result that they're looking for so you want to start with the result and going well what's the goal that you're aiming for because various suppliers out there that we love and work with sometimes have a different um goal in mind so if you're looking for brand building continuity um, and, and, and to get uh, leads and registrations, it, it, you have to play a game at a higher level on social media. You've got to basically have premium content. You have very specific content. You've got to run the ads. You've got to do it consistently. You know, it, it, it's a thing. <laughs> um, it's not straightforward, but it's doable if you follow kind of the right, doing the right things in the right way in the right order. Right. Um, you know, the next level, then the next level down, there's like probably like two or three layers um, of it. And then there's, you know, and there's various goals for each one. Lowest level goal that you'll, that you're, and you, you pin the price point to that goal. So now you, what you do, what a boss mode basically uh, um, client will do is they'll compare 
You know, they're looking for apples to apples, but not just apples to apples. They're trying to figure out what kind of fruit they actually want in the first place. So they're actually going, they're jumping from going, I need social media and why is yours different? They're jumping beyond that and saying, okay, what's my goal? What do I need to achieve for this? And then going backwards and saying, okay, how do I compare who, who achieves that goal? And then going back and going, okay, who's got the best value proposition for achieving that goal? So that's, it's, it's a, it's a multi-step kind of thinking process, a little mm -hmm. bit of chess rather than checkers, where you got to think a couple moves ahead and start with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey once said, and then somehow it's a highly effective people and then work your way backwards. So, and then, you know, and, and it's not just social media, you mentioned CRM at the beginning, you know, what's the goal of CRM? Well, it's to get, it, it's actually got a bunch of different goals. And when you start digging into it and you can understand everything it can do, Oh wow! Okay, that's why you guys are charging this much to run my social to run my CRM and, and change it up and build it out and help me operationalize it is because there isn't just one thing a CRM points out. There's actually like three or four different things that it can do, and yeah. I was just scratching the surface of one of those things, which is right. you know um, you know managing lead flow inside the system, um, you know. But there's more it can do, and and then when you start seeing everything it can do, you're like, wow, okay, that's a tool now that is you know, the cost of it plus the service fee that we charge is, is the ROI is just staggering when you actually consider all those pieces. So right. that, that's kind of the tactical approach that we've seen with the difference in questions that a boss mode um, client will ask versus one that's still operating in that, you know, oh, this costs too much, or this is, you know, um, they, they won't, they were only looking for a secondary goal, which is like, I'm looking for a social media rather than for the end goal. What, what does that get? Yeah. Um, and, and if you look at that, it's not just, you know, when I look at that, it's not just how they're picking a supplier. We're just, that's a good example, but it's also being done inside their business. It's like, how are they approaching their staff? I don't want to spend, you know, um, money on, on culture building and retention and paying my staff more, et cetera. Um, you know, instead of looking at the cost of turnover, instead of looking at cost of acquiring, instead of looking that teachers is what they sell. They don't, you know, they're not selling, you know, the facility is a like wrapping around the teachers inside the program. Yeah. The quality of the teachers matter, matters more than anything else because those teachers are going to cause 80% of your problems and also 80% of your success. You know, they're driving those, those two variables inside the business. Yes. It's, you know, it's looking at their enrollments. Um, as you were saying before, like, are you looking at the, at the, you know, the control that when you're, when you're looking at what data look for, you go, you know, my cost and my profit margin is this, it's small. And so I can't make an investment. And yet when you make the investment, that, that, <laughs> that revenue, that sales increases amount of money in the bank, but the cost can stay relatively, you know, in, fr in fractionally a little bit more profit margin increases. So, you know, they're, they're looking at the final number as, as a control. Like, how do I increase my profit? Well, you can't increase your profit directly. It's just, an, it's just a result-based number. You got to go backwards. You can decrease your cost or you can increase your, your sales. Then how do you do that? And they start digging in and then going, okay, if I, if I save a dollar a package on diapers, that's a thousand dollars a year. Um, is it worth me switching suppliers? If it takes 10 hours, I just made a hundred dollars an hour. And right. that's just for the first year and then onwards, you know, yeah. um, they start like, those are the boss mode tactical thinking that, that I, I, I hear clients say to me, you know, so it's like, yeah. And so then, and, then, and, then, and then that result is there, you know, they're all expanding and, and opening up new centers. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about return on investment and return on time. And I want to frame it from the place of well, a couple of key points. When I started my business in 2009, officially, the first thing I did was invest in a CRM and get drip campaign set up. And then the next thing I did was have a wow website that made that grabbed attention of the visitor. And I was tracking basic metrics every single month on the analytics of my website, I had a simple spreadsheet. I would go into my Google analytics and me, the entrepreneur, but I was a baby entrepreneur. So I was doing all the things, but I set up my business to be a data-driven business from the very beginning with a simple spreadsheet and with a CRM. And what I'm seeing across our industry is that so many folks that we work with have focused on the mechanics of the business, the operations of the classroom and the curriculum and the nuances, which is fantastic, but they didn't set their business up from the beginning to be a data-driven business. So anybody that's listening to this podcast, that's a startup mode, because we have a lot of people coming to us right now who are home-based childcare providers wanting to grow to centers. In fact, we've three of them just came into our 
strategy session and, and wanted to get free strategy sessions this week with us. And they're all home-based childcare providers that want to expand. My message to anyone, but especially startup people is set it up from the beginning. So you're tracking easy data and have these things in place, a great website, a funnel, an enrollment funnel, a CRM, you know, simple email messaging, texting, set these things up so that you have a business from the very, very, very beginning of when you open your doors, number one. Number two, return on investment, return on time. I say so many times, Bruce, the last 10 kids enrolled and so many of our clients still have 10 or 20 spaces. Some have 50, some have 100 across 10 locations. That's 10 per location. They're like, oh, I'm good. I'm at 90%. If you fill up those last 10 kids, that's six figures. You could pay for GYC services. You could pay for academy. You could pay for teacher raises. You could pay for a new playground just because those last more pay yourself more, go on a vacation to Italy. Those last 10 kids are almost all pure profit. So you said, well, how do I raise my profit margin? Focus on those last 10 kids because they're literally almost. And then when's the last time you did a price increase, look at extra fees that you can bring in, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, and then the return on time piece is plugging people into your business that know the complexities. Boss mode is if you're not good at technology and complexity of data and social media and all the nuances of Facebook and Instagram, hire it out. Like, why would you spend a hundred hours trying to get good at it when you could just write the check and then pick up those last 20 kids and it would pay for itself 10, 20, 30 times over. So those are the things that have me banging my head against the wall a little bit with clients is like, yeah. cause I keep saying the same message and I don't know why it's not yeah. being listened to. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, there's a knowledge awareness and there's like taking the action on it. And yeah, you know, the, it, when it comes to marketing, I find that um, uh, most of our clients are owner operators. They started the business because they would, they saw a need in the marketplace. I mean, I, I would say close to 65, 70% of them have the same story. Yeah. Um, I had my kids, I couldn't find a good center. And then I, I started one because I wanted my kids to have a great place to, to go. Yep. And now they're older and is expanding and blah, blah, blah. Or a small fraction is like, I took over a center from a parent who did the same thing for them and they took over their parents' center and then it's it was small and then they've blown it up. You know, those are the, those are probably the top two. And then the next couple's, you know, very vari- variations on that on a theme. Um, it, <laughs> the, <laughs> you said so much. I want to talk to, to I know, China I know. On. Um, so, I, I mean, a bunch of things first, um, you know, it's interesting, Chris, because you're, you're, mar- you, I mean, you come from a marketing background and you're also very data driven yourself. And I find most of our clients are not data driven. So right. they're, they're people, people, not, not numbers people. Yeah. And um, one of the approaches that we take at GYC is that, um, it, it, you know, there's numbers and there's, there's a context of the numbers and then there's, you know, an analysis of the numbers to figure out what to do next. Here's the numbers I would say that every childcare center needs to track. Um, uh, their profit margins um, and their cash flow. You know, you got to have enough cash coming in every month to pay your bills. Like at GYC, for example, our pay- we're growing, we're in growth mode. So our payroll at the middle of the month is negative cash flow. So we need X amount of dollars in the bank to be able to meet that. And at the end of the month, we're net positive again. So that's cash flow. Mm-hmm. Um, then at the beginning and the end of every month, we look at the profit margins. For so that's that's number one right off the top you want to basically look at that if you you know then dig into your costs if you want to reduce your costs and dig into your revenue um if you want to increase it most people are focusing on the revenue not on the cost side on the revenue side those 10 last 10 15 last spots man they're i mean almost always a pure profit they're not hiring any more teachers they're you know uh, some folks now maybe need to open a classroom, so they would need to hire some teachers. But for the most part, they still have a couple spots filled um, in other places. Yep. Here's a boss mode tactic that um, I, I can tell you which one of our clients are boss mode. I can go into our Google ad, uh, Ads account, and I can sort by what the day spend is. And those top 30 clients are all boss mode clients. <laughs> um, they're spending more than anybody else. Most of them, a lot of them are full, and they're still spending inadvertently and people were like why would you spend 30 40 dollars a day on on continue advertising if you're full because <laughs> they want to stay full stay full they're staying in front you know that's they're they're building out their wait list yeah what happens when you build a wait list you open the second center and they know that you know their mindset is thinking up ahead 
and going, okay, if I build a wait list this big that I know there's a demand in the marketplace, I know my brand is still number one. I know I'm going to lose 25, 30% of the kids because they age out of my programs. I know there's natural attrition. If I lose a kid, it takes me six weeks to fill it. I'm missing six weeks of cash flow. But That's it takes it. me one day to fill it. I got Boom. six weeks of cash flow in the bank. I mean, it's more than paying for it, you know? Yeah, that's $1,500. Um, that's that's 1500 bucks, by the way, for six weeks. So yeah. For six weeks. So <laughs> if they're spending $30 a day on extra Google ads, that's $900 a month. That's $600 of pure profit that you just made on top of the cash flow exactly. uh, reconstitution. So it's that's the kind of math and thinking that, you know, when we're defining what boss mode is, and we go down to the granular details of day-to-day decision-making. Those are, those are the decisions that they make. Like, I just had a great meeting with, with one of the Empire clients the other day. She's struggling, um, filling up a new center that's open. She's also increased capacity, another one. We deviated budget over here. And then she's like, well, what about this one? I was like, wow, do you want to spend another $40 a day? She's like, yes. <laughs> it, was like, it, was, it was like I asked a dumb question. <laughs> you know? it's like, right. I mean, I need, a, I need verbal confirmation for spend more of your money. But it was like, it was like, of course, you know, like I, I just, one kid more than pays for that, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, it's, that's like, those are the kinds of quick decisions. They don't, they don't have to be convinced. Um, so, so that, so back to the data and metrics, um, revenue, dial it back to leads. You have to go into your CRM. If you don't have a CRM, to be honest, every single person that wants to start a center or should, has a center should have, that's one of the first pieces of software I would, I would pick up. I mean, it's a no brainer to get into a CRM system. Um, and actually at, with having a CRM is actually a differentiation. We just, we just uh, are, we have a client right now who's got three or more of our services, Google ad, uh, Google ads, social media, and website. And that normally defines them as a boss mode client, but, it, but it, it's, We've we've decided that having a website and CRM are key to those things because um, they're struggling with leads. And when we look, when we break it down, um, a lot of it, their lead flow is decent. It's just the conversion rate is really visible. Like we're getting ten leads, and only one of them is 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 being registered, mm-hmm. converting. Uh, you have to have at least twenty five percent. That's kind of your minimum margin. You lose half to a tour, and another half to enroll. Yeah. Um, some ratio of that. Yep. And you know, so 10 should be 2.5 out. Exactly. Um, so, and if, yep. if that number is lower, that's the, so the, uh, that's the first place I would be, you know, have a spreadsheet every month. You also want to be careful of looking at data from a time. You have to differentiate your time span because yeah. in childcare, we have, we have ebbs and flows. Yes. You know, <laughs> if you, if you want to know why 12 kids enrolled, in one day, you just go back nine months, and you're like, "Oh, there was a there was a there was a power outage for two days. <laughs> People were didn't have anything else to do because Netflix was out, you know." So um, it, it's it's common to have these, you know. Ask any uh, both my boys were born to a to a midwife, and you ask any midwife, you know, they'll have twenty kids in one week and three in another. So it's the same thing. You're gonna you're gonna have that ebb and flow of of kids. So you want to take your time span. It's also every community is a bit different. Um, some are very fast action. So they're last minute. They'll look for you and enroll in a couple of weeks. We have a lot of our clients, the average time from a lead comes in, a registration happens is between 60 to 65 days. So if you're measuring things by week, you're not going to get the end result. You need to measure things in the time span and that's average. So some will take 90 days, some will take five. Um, but that you got to look at that. Um, and yeah. And these that. are all so, concepts that even guys I teach in enrollment bootcamp, these basic concepts, mm-hmm. give you trackers, teach you how to look at your quarterly data and then roll it up to annual. It's exactly to Bruce's point. There's ebbs and flows. And even to use like a recent case study, Bruce, we met with Mike, who is an empire client who's been with us the longest in Academy. And he's in Indiana. He's got 10 schools and I'm sure he won't mind me sharing this on the podcast. Eight of the 10 schools are doing great. They're full, full, full. Two of the 10 schools are troubled children. Uh, They are underperforming and have been underperforming for quite some time. Classic 80-20, right? Classic. Right. So you look at the two schools and he's like, can you come in in January and meet with my team, my marketing people and my leadership to help us work on conversion of the tours and look at our leads and our lead flow and everything and do a consultation for him on those two schools? I'm like, absolutely. And I said, what I need in order for me to really do that effectively is please send me your CRM report so that I can see for the last year by location, what your data looks like in your enrollment funnel. And then I can help you solve the problem 
immediately because I don't I'm not clear whether it's a lead flow problem, a conversion problem or both. So to your point, right. and he's like, yeah, I'll send it right over. So that's an example. I wanted to give the listeners a, an example of a case study that's actually happening today in Indiana of boss mode, you know, and, and he doesn't always like make sure that he, you know, he's not, he has his little pitfalls too. Like we recently, he's like, you're right. I'm not hiring. I'm not recruiting strongly enough. I need to be more aggressive. I need to put more money behind recruiting because we still have dark classrooms. And I was like, get out of here. I was like, what you have? dark?" <laughs> I was like, Mike, you have dark classrooms. Like I totally kind of gave it to him, but he, sometimes we all just need that reminder. You know, that's the benefit yeah. of working with coaches and consultants. So I love your examples. I love the steps that you gave everybody to kind of dive in. Um, let's talk about, um, any other pitfalls that you see on around people who may go in and out of boss mode or things yeah. that are keeping them from fully embracing it. Well, uh, three things I think that are, are the biggest pitfalls. Um, frustration is one of the biggest ones and it comes generally with number two, which is overwhelm. When uh, you have more than one large problem or many, many small problems hit you all at once, uh, people fall off the, that curiosity and they, they fall into fear. And when there's, you know, there it's things or they feel things are not working fast enough. That's that's the third one. That's speed. So patience is the answer to the third one. Overwhelm is um, is um, uh, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? It's um, unstacking the problems. Like they basically stack all the problems on top of each other, and all of a sudden they have, they think they have a massive problem. What they really have is you know one significant problem or or you know the size like you know right uh, but they have to unstack 10, them and, right and they unstack them and they got a bunch of one or two out of ten problems mm -hmm. but because they're hitting you all at once you're conflating them you're adding them all together and you're feeling this giant weight but if you break them down to small things and then what you do um dave ramsey i love this uh concept of debt repayments he calls it the snowball and what he says is you take the smallest debt you have and you repay it first. So if you have three credit cards and one's got 1,000, 3,000 and 8,000, you do the $1,000 one first. And then you take that same amount of payment that you have and you apply it to the second one, the third one, and it actually uh, brings your payment down the most. A lot of people are like, well, I wanna pay the one with the highest interest first because I'll right. pay less interest, but it actually doesn't, the math doesn't work out the same. Um, Interesting. So what, and it's that same concept you can apply to problem solving. If you, if you unstack your problems, you know, you could sit down and time block four hours and get rid of six out of your 12 problems because they're smaller. They only take two, three hours to solve each one. You, you break down two, three hours a day. You knock down all, you know, five of them out in a week. All of a sudden, like at the end of the week, first, you're going to feel super accomplished. Your confidence is going to go up because you knock down a bunch of tasks. You're going to get out of that fear overwhelm mode and you're going to get into, um, you know, open mindedness, curiosity again. You got your boss mode hat again rather than your fear hat again. Or stop, you know, finger pointing, blaming, you know, under the blanket, eating the ice cream. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix marathon, do that, you know, right. out, do that, you know, fight with my <laughs> partner, do that. Um, and kids, you know, start yelling at the kids a bit more, do that. Uh, um, you'll start, you'll start dialing all those pieces back. Things will start feeling a little bit more manageable. Then you can tackle the bigger problems. Yeah. Um, and that and that's you know it's compartmentalizing and and then nailing it down and then using time blocking techniques where you just black out four hours in your schedule or three or two hours a day for a week or three weeks you know um, to to hit up all the all the issues you've got right. and make it extra. And one of the biggest whenever I tell that somebody they're like yeah but I'm already working fifty hours a week or sixty hours a week in the business I'm struggling and I'm like well you have two options. One, you continue to struggle and then you're slowly going to degrade and you're grinding and that's your life. Or you're going to work 70 hours a week for the next six weeks. Like put in those extra 10 hours, blo time block them. Don't just, it's not more firefighting. You got to work on the business. You got to yep. work on these problems. So cut them out of the knees, track them, you know, tackle one at a time. And in, in three, four months, you're, uh, you're going to be so much further ahead. Then all of a sudden your seven hour work week is a 50, then a 40, and then a 30. And you're like, whoa, where's where's all my, you know, and then you're sitting around twiddling your thumbs going, where's all the firefighting I was doing before? Well, you, you were knocking those pieces down. Yeah, um, I would start, I would start to that point with the five hours you're spending on things that you hate or that drain you and just get those off of your plate, hire it out, well, outsource it, figure yeah. out, you know, and that's not very much money. Like you could hire a front desk manager to come in for not a lot of money, 17 bucks an hour and get all, get those 
five or 10 hours a week of, of junk of firefighting. If you can get that off your plate, like that can be life-changing. And, but it does take a little bit of an investment. People are like, well, how am I going to find the money? You just find it. You, you redirect it. You find it, you do it, you put it on a credit card, you dive in, you, you just have to do it. You know, that's, but then things are going to release your, your life will get better because you just made that one little baby step. And now you're going to start getting momentum. And especially at this time of year, people are listening to this in the beginning of 2023, Bruce, I love that advice that you just shared. It's fantastic. So good. So we are unfortunately out of time as always, because once you and I get started, we go over time. <laughs> Um, but talk a little bit about, so we're, we're going to do boss mode coffee. We're going to do boss mode book club. So this year we are going to do a quarterly book club. We are going to, um, give you guys a book that is meaningful to us in being a boss mode entrepreneur, business owner, and we're going to have a fireside chat um, and have members in the book club come in and share our thoughts and, and just continue and, and read Sharpen Our Saw together in 2023. These are for people who are Academy members and also are a full service GYC client, which is three or more services. So if you're a GYC- and one, one of those services, and one of those services has to be CRM. And one of those <laughs> services has to be CRM. Ah, that's good. And um, so, so those, and we don't know how many there are, but there's probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 of those people. Yeah, yeah at least. Yeah. Be 50. Um, so that's going to be really fun. So we wanted to announce that this year. And our first book choice is going to be coming out here um, shortly in the next handful of days. And so is there anything else <coughs> that you would like to share with the listeners? about how to take the bull by the horns in 2023 and also any contact information if they want to learn more about GYC. Absolutely. I love, you know, it always sometimes feels like making New Year's resolutions is like this abstract thing, this new year, but, you know, and starting fresh. But I love the idea of clean slates and you can do this for yourself anytime. Like you just mentioned it at the beginning of the podcast about puppy training that you, you know, it kind of went downhill, but at any time you can go back and yeah. reinvest in yourself and go back and watch those videos. And yes. I, I was laughing because I have Delilah, new puppy too. She's now almost four months old. And I, at the beginning, I watched, I did the same thing you did, exactly the same <laughs> thing you did. I, in, the, in the first day, I watched like like four hours of videos and, uh-huh. and, and then I started, I'm like, oh my God, this is hard. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then it was like puppy, puppy destruction everywhere. Yes. So you, it's the same thing, you know, we're going to start the year, we're going to make these big commitments. Um, we're going to work on it for a little bit. It's going to dwindle. It's like, you know, going to the gym, doing diet, doing, working on your business, trying to get into this boss mode uh, idea. Yeah. Like, give yourself grace. It's, it's 100% you are going to decline. And then you're allowed to look at it and going, uh oh, I'm on a downward slope again. I'm getting back into all these, you know, uh, firefighting issues, challenges. I'm, I'm losing that mindset. I'm being frustrated, being depressed again. Right. And you, you're going to want to then um, just like give yourself that forgive yourself right away, you know, know that everybody's doing it, Chris, myself, literally everybody. Yeah. And then turn it around and you can recommit yourself in a moment. You know, you can literally just sit down, uh, crack open your notebook, look at the things that you had promised to do working on the business, pick one time block, two hours, and then nail it. That's, that's it. That's the, yeah. that's the secret to the whole thing. I mean, both Chris and I get into overwhelm. We get frustrated. Believe me, we, we, we have our one-on-ones together. <laughs> They're more like venting sessions to each other. Yes. They um, are. And, uh, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it, and we get each other back on track and, you know, and then yeah. take those actions we needed to, um, in terms of like connecting with grow your center, visit grow your really simple grow your center.com no spaces no dashes nothing and uh there's like 20 book a call links with us on that page <laughs> click one of them uh talk to our sales team um it's you know it's a consultative sales process a lot of people get a lot out of it uh we divest strategy approach why you do the things that you do like we're giving you the golden nuggets um on that call mm-hmm. and a lot of people walk away and they're like wow i feel like i have a marketing plan i feel like i have a you know a way forward i feel like i know exactly what to do next and where i'm fumbling and where i'm i'm stuck and uh if you don't sign up you get at least you're going to get some benefit out of it you're going to have somebody working and talking to you about working on your business about being in that boss mode mindset that call is a boss mode mindset call 
And, uh, and then our services are there for you to delegate and build business systems and for us to take some of the heavy lifting off your plate. So if you're not an expert in marketing, you're not an expert in recruiting, we're here for you. Awesome. Uh, we've got a pretty solid track record. So, and uh, Very much help. so. Yeah. No, it's really, really good. And it's so funny. I want to go back and listen to our episode that we did mid-pandemic in May of 2020 because <laughs> I think like we had maybe two or three services back then, you know, we didn't have recruitment, we didn't have CRM, we didn't have some of the other components. And so I love how we've grown, how we continue to serve the childcare industry and be of service and um, help you guys. So uh, thank you. That's all great advice. This has been extremely valuable. And I hope that people that are listening and watching do go take a baby step of action from this. And you're right, you are going to kind of dip down and just recommit. The recommit is the, is the key phrase of this whole thing. So, uh, and giving yourself grace. So I love that. Bruce, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Chris. Always. Fantastic. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. I know you got some writer downers and some serious nuggets from this one. And uh, don't forget to turn in, tune in next time for the next episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. Take care and God bless and Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you liked this episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. If you did, please share it with someone you know and help spread the word to your friends in our industry and on social media. Child care business success is my passion and I'm honored to be on this journey with you. As a thank you for listening, learn more about how to grow your business and make more income with our brand new free quiz the what's my number one income killer quiz exclusively for preschool and child care owners take the quiz today at childcarequiz.com to discover what your number one income killer is and how to solve it take care and god bless